Team Negative said this multiple times that if you are willing to commit any crime, you will automatically be a bad employee because you automatically have different attitudes what right and wrong. We think if that was the case, we are never going to let people out of jail. If that was the case, most people should be permanently banned from getting those kind of jobs. We think, ladies and gentlemen, your criminality in one area doesn't define your life as a whole at the end of the day. In today's debate, I will be talking about two major areas. One, the problem of a criminal escalation, and secondly, the problem of racial discrimination. But before that, several points of rebuttal towards opposition. Firstly, in terms of why it's all right to let judges to ban people from certain types of job, but not give employers a blanket ability to decide whether or not they care about. We think there are three reasons. One, firstly, we think the decision in the current status quo should lie with judge or with some or with some random employer who decide that they are not comfortable working with someone who committed a minor sexual assault 20 years ago. We think employers might feel uncomfortable with it, but that doesn't mean that it's fair at the end of the day. We think that individual to be a denied a job that they are capable of, uh, upon of performing on the basis that previously they have criminal history. We think that in the current status quo, they've shown sufficient rehabilitation to be allowed out of jail and to be allowed to interact within society. Second reason, we think that there is a distinguishing factor, ladies and gentlemen. So if you think that in the current status quo, employees are unable to be trusted in jobs that don't have high level of supervision, then why don't you, in the current status quo, make a blanket ban on these kinds of jobs and individuals? We think in the current status quo, we have different degrees of rehabilitation and different degree of acceptance in which we think Opposition cannot have a blanket ban between people that have sexual offense and people that are actually killing people in the current status quo. But finally, ladies and gentlemen, last response, we think uh, that in the current status quo, but thirdly, finally, last response, the reason why we restrict the rights of pedophiles to work with children is because we think the risk is too high. But we agree that not all of them are going to offend and some of them may have been well rehabilitated. That's why we want to have a selective method in which we try to judge based on court system and not by the employer at the very first beginning, ladies and gentlemen. But moreover, let's talk about whether or not these individuals have a good way in trying to judge individuals. I've already told you that given the case that in the current status quo, we ban individuals that have possible relevant jobs, but it is not because in the current status quo, we try to change that. First speaker affirmative said that in the current status quo, by our mechanism, we suppress someone's ability to access criminal record, which is in the current status quo is very substantive, in which employers use these kinds of things and use them as relevancy in trying to decision make on which employers that they want to accept and which employers that they want to care upon. First, ladies and gentlemen, we think that the crimes that they have done in the current past are not a perfect representation that exists from these individuals to begin with, ladies and gentlemen. We think most of them do these kinds of things through economic desperation, through coercion, through foolishness of what they've done in the current status quo. And we can see that, that in most of these kind of individuals have done this from juvenile offenders or maybe juvenile reasonings. So why must individuals from juvenile offenders must be criminalized criminalized continuity in the current status quo, ladies and gentlemen. Because even in current status quo, juvenile offenders are given slack, or are given less ability to be have a continuity to be judged or to be have deterrence at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen. So we think finally, we must have a holistic adjudication on what do people are going to do in the future and not have a blanket ban what opposition wants in current status quo. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to my substantive materials. But before that, yes. Why do you think it is more effective to conceal one's criminal records than creating bigger deterrents when it comes to preventing our civil system? If the end of that argument is trying to have social harmony, then by having social harmony, ladies and gentlemen, is to incentivize individuals to feel integrated and to feel accepted in a society in which we see, ladies and gentlemen, their mechanism doesn't provide that, ladies and gentlemen. But nextly, let's talk about my argumentation. I'm going to talk about uh, racial uh, criminal escalation and le let's look what will happen in the current status quo, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to talk about my substantial point, talk about criminal ex escalation. 
Let's look at someone who is successfully, successfully rehabilitated in the current status quo. They have previously involved in criminal culture. Maybe when they are being rehabilitated, they want to move past their criminal history. They want to get a new job. They want to feel complete. They say they want to move on. They start applying for a job and people start asking them, what is your criminal history? People start asking them to leave. Maybe they get a job or maybe they get a job where they are being discriminated upon, Malay gentlemen. Maybe they are going out of university and they want to have a accountancy firm, ladies and gentlemen. But they, he is being rejected just because of his criminal record, ladies and gentlemen. So we think, what will you do when you are that desperate and you feel that society are never going to accept you regardless of what you do and how well you have been rehabilitated? You get upset and you get angry to the society that creates the culture. This is essentially what my first speaker say, that rehabilitation are very comprehensive, ladies and gentlemen. This is making people to the circumstances where they engage again the gang culture where they are making them do criminal things again ladies and gentlemen this is make individuals going to do the same things that make them do, go to jail at the very first place ladies and gentlemen but moreover ladies and gentlemen let's move to my second point that, which is talking about racial vilification we think in status quo ladies and gentlemen employers often ask and investigate our criminal history and make adjudication based on proportionality in the current status quo African American and Latino populations are being discriminated upon ladies and gentlemen because employers see that these kinds of people are people that are more have li more likely are able to have criminal intentions ladies and gentlemen we think in the current status quo this only exists because of the ability of employers to access these kinds of data in which they are going to make adjudication that are more proportionate to white Americans or people that have backgrounds that are not coming from African American and Latinos. In comparison, our side are going to limit the ability of employers to discriminate or maybe racist towards individuals just because of their backgrounds and not see the merit of these individuals. It is not easy to stand from criminal side, but it is easy to stand for people that are trying to protect people that want to rehabilitate towards status quo. We are very proud to propose. Thank you.